Over the last two weeks, ten earthquakes have occurred in South Carolina, raising many eyebrows. And USGS researchers are calling the earthquakes a scientific mystery. But they're not really that mysterious. Tonight, we're going to tell you all you need to know about South Carolina quakes and why there is something we need to worry about, especially going into the new eddy minimum. Now, the quakes are centered just north of Columbia in Elgin. There's Elgin, South Carolina. Columbia is down to the south, about 20 miles away. And to better understand earthquakes, a geophysicist at Central and Eastern Regional Coordinator with USGS, Dr. Thomas Pratt, says that earthquakes in the eastern United States are still a mystery because while there are a lot of fault lines across the region, researchers aren't sure what causes them to become active or start moving. One of the mysteries of the earthquake science is why we get earthquakes in the eastern U.S. at all, because it's not a plate margin. Most earthquakes like California or Alaska are on the edges of two tectonic plates, whereas the eastern U.S. is near the edge of a plate. It's not near one. It's on a passive margin, in fact. So that is the only mystery. But it's not really mysterious that there is an earthquake threat in the south. If you look at the colors on this map, not the dark red, those are population densities. But the blue and the yellow and the pink that's underneath... Those are the highest hazard for earthquake shaking. And you can see here this pink region in the center of the country. That is the New Madrid region. There's another pink region here on the Appalachian Spine from Atlanta north up into North Carolina. That is the Appalachian Fault System. And then if we come into South Carolina, almost the entire state is at risk for modified Marcelli intensity of six or greater in shaking, all the way up to seven. And one of the regions we're looking at is right there near these population densities in Colombia. Equivalent to the risks all over the West Coast in South Carolina. I bet you didn't know that. Well, now you know. And in fact, there are regions. The RIS is, these are two regions of seismic activity, a small one up here. The SRS, the BSZ, and the MPSSZ. This is the largest hazard area. And these are the largest hazard seismic zones in the state. But we're talking about an area north and a little bit east of Columbia, right here where I'm circling, on the fall line of the coastal plain. That's where the faults are happening, in an area that could potentially be a new seismic zone. Now, many people are unaware of how common earthquakes are in South Carolina. Approximately 10 to 15 earthquakes are recorded annually in South Carolina, with three to five of them felt or noticed by people. In this case, we have 10 earthquakes felt or noticed by people in two weeks. So this is much higher than the normal activity. In fact, probably 10 times higher. Now, about 70% of South Carolina earthquakes are located in the Middleton Place Somerville Seismic Zone. We just showed you that zone here, the Middleton Place Somerville Seismic Zone which is not where these earthquakes are occurring. They're occurring up here in an area that's not a seismic zone. So there is that. While there have not been any large-scale earthquakes in South Carolina in recent years, we're going to get to some really big earthquakes that have happened in the past. And in fact, the region where the earthquakes are happening is now highlighted here in orange, that little dot. That's the zone where the seismicity is occurring currently. And it is a hot spot uh, as far as the state is concerned. So we're keeping a close eye on that. Now, while there haven't been any large-scale earthquakes in South Carolina recently, well, let's just blow this up a little for you so you can keep an eye on it. Uh, where was I? Yeah, a new study confirms the state is extremely vulnerable to earthquake activity. The study, based on scientific research, provided information about the likely effects of earthquakes on the current population and the contemporary structures and systems, including roadways, bridges, and homes. And, well, the conclusions they made are quite spectacular. But let's go to some more information first. Let's talk about the South Carolina fault systems. 
Most of South Carolina's earthquakes occur in the coastal plain where the underlying rocks are very faulted or broken from the breakup of plates and the opening of the Atlantic. This is 220 million years ago, but still these regions are littered with normal faults. The cracks in the deep rocks mean that this area of the plate is weak. And if pressure is exerted on the edge of the plate, some of these faults break and will allow rocks to move. That's just how a fault uh, works. Now, the threat level for South Carolina, currently there is no reliable method for predicting the time, place, and size of an earthquake. Several areas of South Carolina regularly experience earthquakes, and we gave you those statistics just moments ago. Approximately 70% of the quakes in the state occur in the coastal plain with most clustered around three areas. But in this case, none of them are clustered in those regions. And South Carolina has experienced some extremely devastating quakes in, well, the recent geologic past. The two most significant historical earthquakes in South Carolina are the 1886 Charleston earthquake and the 1913 Union County quake. Now, the August 31st, 1886 earthquake, which struck in the Somerville, Charleston area, is the largest event to have occurred in the southeastern U.S. and the most destructive, killing 60 people. It is the most destructive to occurred in the southeastern U.S. in maybe 200 years, but the New Madrid pales in comparison. But they're not saying that's in the southeast. They're not putting it in that region. But in fact... So this would be the most deadly we know about, killing 60 people. On January 1st, 1913, Union County experienced an earthquake that by today's standards would probably be measured at M4.1. But the 1886 had a magnitude of 7.3, which is equivalent to one of the two major New Madrid shocks back in the early 1700s. And the 1886 quake was felt over 2 million square miles. Where was I? Okay, and we're back. Now, let's talk about the 1886 earthquake and how significant it was. The initial shock lasted nearly one minute. The earthquake had a magnitude of 7.3. It was felt over 2.5 million square miles from Cuba to New York and Bermuda to the Mississippi River as well. Structural damage extended several hundred miles to the cities in Alabama, Ohio, and Kentucky. And at the time of the earthquake, many of the residents of Charleston thought it was a calamity that struck the entire world. That's how significant it was. Many residents were surprised when they discovered it was principally local and in their area where the majority of severe damage occurred. Geologically speaking, Charleston lies on one of the most seismically active areas in the eastern United States. The seismicity in the coastal plain of South Carolina clusters around the cities of Somerville and Bowman, South Carolina, known as the Middleton Place Somerville Seismic Zone. Now, this is not where the earthquakes are happening, but they are happening to the north of here in South Carolina. Now, an earthquake today of this magnitude Results of a scientific study commissioned by South Carolina Emergency Management Division indicate that an earthquake today of similar intensity of 7.3 in location to one of the 1886 could have the following results. An estimated 45,000 casualties, of which approximately 9,000 or 20% would be major injuries requiring hospitalization. Fatalities would number about 900. A daytime event would cause the highest number of casualties. Nearly 70,000 households or 200,000 people would be displaced, with an estimated 60,000 people requiring short-term shelter. Total economic losses, 20, 14 to 20 billion. About 10.9 billion in economic losses would occur in the Tri-County area of Charleston. More than 250 fires would burn, primarily in the Tri-County area. The lack of operational firefighting equipment and water due to the earthquake would be a major concern, as well as pipelines and other things lighting on fire. 80% of urban households in the affected Tri-County area would be deprived of water. It would take weeks, if not months, to restore the systems to normal operation. Hospitals would likely suffer significant damage that could result in up to 30 hospitals of the 108 in the state being non-functional. These are the facts, and this is not a uh, fear-mongering or a scare tactic. This will happen again, and the question is when.
and are you prepared? Now, let's talk about when this event occurred in 1886, which is right here. 1886 was, in fact, the very beginning of the Gleisberg minimum after the first cycle. Just like we finished cycle 24 and the new minimum, it happened at the same time we're sitting now and we're seeing these pre-shocks potentially for a big quake in South Carolina. I'm not saying that it could happen. I'm saying that based on the sun and past um, cosmic considerations, that the last large earthquake happened right here after the first cycle in the Gleisberg minimum. If cycle 24 is the first cycle in the new minimum, which we think, well, we're in the same time as back then. And that's just based on solar science. Now, if we come over to South Carolina and look at some of the largest quakes in the last 50 years, we're going to see 4.7 is the highest magnitude. And that's down here in that North Charleston, that seismic zone where the big quakes occur. Uh, if we look at some more recent quakes, we could see here a pink quake 23 years ago. Yes, that was a 3.5 magnitude. And that's still far away from the region we're talking about. It's right here in Colombia. And if we come down here at this green, this is where all the earthquakes have been happening. In fact, this is a 3.3 from one week ago. So do we have a new seismic fault zone that's becoming active on the passive margin of the U.S.? Perhaps. Do we knew, know that South Carolina is in a very active zone? Well, yes, we do. And this is the state of South Carolina. This is the region we're talking about. And it is in the highest hazard on the modified Mercalli intensity of shaking at seven. So anything's possible. And the population density there is epic. So a large earthquake will occur in South Carolina. When? It's anyone's guess. Well, and the time is right based on, well, historical documentation and cycles of catastrophe. Hope you got something out of the video. Boom! I just gave a sneak peek to the next one. Share this with like-minded people. If you're in South Carolina, be prepared, not scared. These quakes probably won't kill you. Did you see if there's going to be 45,000 casualties and only 900 deaths? It's similar to that's going on now. Almost no one dies. And if you're prepared, you will weather the storm. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment below. We love you. Be safe. That's boom. Mm.